So the first actual addition reaction we'll look at is called hydrohalogenation, and it adds a hydrogen and a halogen across that alkene. So specifically, this works with HCl, HBr, HI, and the classic example we use here is with HBr. Uh, in this case, we see that the regioselectivity is Markovnikov. That means, in this case, one of the things we're adding is an H, so the H will add to the side with more H's, or in this case, really, the H will add to the less substituted side, and in our case, specifically, the bromine will add to the more substituted side. One thing we do have to be careful of, and we'll see the mechanism here shortly, is that the intermediate is a carbocation, so rearrangements are possible. Uh, but there is no stereospecificity if it comes to matter. So let's take a look at how this mechanism works. So it turns out, if you look, in the first step of every single alkene reaction we know the mechanism to, uh, the alkene is going to act as a nucleophile. So your reagent, therefore, is going to add as an electrophile, or act as an electrophile, I should say. Uh, and in this case, we often talk about these addition reactions of alkenes, a lot of them as being electrophilic addition reactions of alkenes as a result. If we look at HBr here, uh, hydrogen's less electronegative and is partially positive. Bromine's more electronegative, partially negative. And so our alkene here is going to actually react with the electron deficient hydrogen. There's our electrophile. Hydrogen can only have one bond, so the old one has to break. Bromine picks up those electrons. So we've got one, op one of two options here. Either that hydrogen ends up bonded to the less substitute side, or the hydrogen ends up bonded to the more substitute side. And as we talked about earlier, this is Markovnikov addition, so we know it's going to be the less substitute side. And the way this works out this way is that, notice, in the reactants, we've got two carbons sharing that pi bond. That pi bond is gone. Only this carbon right here has picked up a fourth new bond. This carbon over here now only has three bonds and is a carbocation, no filled octet. Whereas over here, it would be on the less substitute side. And the idea of, here we've got a secondary carbocation, here we've got a primary carbocation, so your secondary carbocation is more stable. And so we'll run the major synthetic route through that secondary carbocation. We won't consider the primary one at all. So we are also going to form a bromide ion here. So, and predicting the next step is not the worst thing in the world. If you look, you ask yourself, between the two intermediates we formed, is anybody electron rich? Well, bromide got a negative charge. Great, that he'll probably be the nucleophile in the next step. We'll see that most of these end up being a, a series of nucleophilic attack or proton transfers. Uh, is anybody electron deficient? Well, yes. That's our carbocation, big fat positive charge. So he's the electrophile in this step, in the next step, I should say. And nucleophile always attacks electrophile in a nucleophilic attack step. So, and in this case, he's just forming a new bond. So, and again, we had added the hydrogen here. And again, we don't technically have to draw that hydrogen. I'm just doing it for clarity's sake. So, and if we look at our two new sp3 hybridized carbons, it's this one here and this one here, neither one is a chiral center. This carbon right here has got three identical hydrogens, definitely not a chiral center. This one right here is bonded to both of the methyl groups on the side, so not a chiral center either. And since we formed no chiral centers, we just get one achiral product. Now, one thing to note, so... I gave an example here where we wouldn't have to worry about a carbocation rearrangement, but anytime you form a carbocation, you should always consider rearrangements. And we said this one was secondary, and the two adjacent carbons here are both primary, so no rearrangement was going to take place. Uh, but again, anytime you do any of these reactions that involve a carbocation intermediate, and there's three of them, you should always draw out that carbocation and consider is a rearrangement likely. The second reaction on our list is also another example of a hydrohalogenation. Uh, and specifically, this one is specific to HBr. So when you add a peroxide to HBr, it actually totally changes the mechanism. So ROOR here is the generic formula peroxide. Those R's could be H's or any carbon chain. Uh, you'll most commonly see it written generically, but it could be uh, very specific. Um, CH3OOCH3, H2O2. So take your pick. Um, but that's a peroxide, and when you add a peroxide with HBr, it totally changes the mechanism. The mechanisms actually go, go through radical intermediates rather than a carbocation. So, and the net result is we're going to add HNBr anti-Markovnikov. So the bromine is actually going to end up on the less substituted side and the hydrogen on the more substituted side. Now this mechanism, we're not going to actually study it now. This is a little beyond us uh, where we're at, but we will study it in a future chapter involving radical reactions. Uh, one thing to note, I like to think that when you add HBr and ROR, so, or HBr and ROR, as the case may be, uh, that we're scaring HBr into going anti Markovnikov, just my little thing, way of remembering it. Uh, but specifically here, this peroxide, this is unique to HBr. If you add peroxide with HCl or HI, they don't go anti Markovnikov, they still go Markovnikov. It doesn't serve any purpose there, that peroxide. This is specific to HBr. I just don't want you to come away with the idea that uh, adding a peroxide changes any reaction to, you know, go anti Markovnikov. No, it's specific for just 
HBR.